Good morning. Welcome to the Business Survival Strategies webinar. I'm Jasmine Cordero West from the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development. We are going through unprecedented and challenging times. And our small businesses that are the backbone of the economy are struggling. But we are resilient. And collectively, we can get through this. Today, we'll provide you with tools and tips that will help you with this crisis and prepare your small business for any other crisis that may come. We have Mars Zukaviki from Jalima Aranis, Jalima and Associates, that will share her expertise in risk management. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Everybody is muted during this webinar. If you are joining us via conference call, please make sure to mute yourself to reduce any background noise. If you are on video, if you have any questions, unfortunately, this function does not work if you're joining us via conference call. At the bottom of your screen, you can throttle your mouse and you will see an icon that looks like a bubble. Click on this icon and it will bring up the chat box. We will answer your questions throughout the presentation using the chat box function. Or if we do not get to your questions throughout the presentation, we will answer them through the chat box at the end of the presentation. Because most people are working remotely, platforms are at maximum capacity and people's personal bandwidths as well. We may experience some technical difficulties. If we completely drop, which I've experienced in another webinar, Please just log back in using the same link and we will continue. We will also conduct polls throughout the presentation. Please participate in these polls. This session is also being recorded and we will make it available through our YouTube channel and our website. Without further ado, let's get started. Mars. Thank you, Jasmine, for your kind introduction. Welcome all. For those who do not know me, I'm one of the principals of an accounting bookkeeping firm specializing in outsourced services from the cloud. And also the CEO of a strategic management company specializing in talent and operations best practices. During the next hour, I will share with you knowledge, experience, innovative methods and tools that you can apply to your business. There are other webinars, there are other webinars daily that are giving you information on resources, where to go, and providing you government updates, even though that information is vital and we will be providing some of it. This webinar is about methods and tools to overcome this crisis. I am sharing knowledge and processes I have acquired during the past 40 years while working with UNICEF in programs such as a disaster preparedness and relief in Bangladesh, the street children crisis in Brazil, hunger relief campaign crisis in Mozambique, or working for AFS intercultural programs, helping to bring over a thousand students back to the United States through the 9-11 crisis, up to consulting with the New Jersey Small Business Development Center's supporters, 
during the 2011 Obama Jobs Act, in 2013 Hurricane Sandy recovery, and many other current crises that I have uh, that have undermined the stability of our economic development workforce. That they have had a direct impact on small businesses all over the nation and globally. I'm just giving you over some highlights because I want to provide you a sample of my past contributions in this matter so we can set the tone for this webinar. I will be able to provide you with a valuable insights and tips on how to survive and sustain your business during this coronavirus crisis. Proceed. I'm pausing, I'm pausing here because I want to reach you. You have a blank screen, but I want to reach you our learning objectives for today, which are the first one is to understand the meaning of risk management and how to create an effective business platform in time of economic uncertainty. To gather techniques and tools on how to stay in business during times of global uncertainty. To help you create a roadmap that will help you maintain and sustain your business at times of crisis. To provide you with ideas on how to embrace change when there are no other alternatives. To learn ways to reposition or transform your value proposition and remain relevant in your industry at times of economic uncertainty. To provide techniques on how to com communicate to your stakeholders during radical change. And what I mean by stakeholders is anybody who's in your entire universe. You have an association and you have to deal with. And finally, to capitalize from past experience and incorporate its findings to a changing world. In summary, your takeaway after this hour will be many tools. One of them is understanding risk management. We all need to acknowledge that risk management is not a buzzword and it's not just having insurance. I will help you create a checklist with tips on how to follow up on the next actions you created, incorporated them with best practices how to remain and sustain your business. Look, change is not easy. And we will assess when we need to change and how. Do you need to reinvent yourself? Yes, how? And if not, what to do and how to adapt during uncertainty? What would be the best way to communicate to your vendors, clients, government, Reduce the amount of noise that takes you nowhere. You need to capitalize on all the information that we are providing to you. To some of you, it will be apl applicable. To some not. Just take away what you need and make sure to implement what you need. The changing world. <laughs> This coronavirus situation has changed our personal and work landscape. You notice that I have added color to some work in this slide. Let's see. The words I colored in the previous slide are repeated over here. I'm asking whoever is having a phone uh, to please mute it because there's back, background noise. I'm going to repeat what I just said. The words I colored in the previous slide are repeated over here. These words or phrases may create stress. Let's, let's talk about the first actionable takeaway. I'm giving you an exercise that you can complete after this webinar. Write down these words or phrases you see on the screen now, 
or simply just take a screenshot of this slide. Now that you have this information on your own time, after the webinar has ended, reflect how to retool your thinking. Consider, consider reacting differently to the colored words. For example, economic uncertainty. What does it mean to you? For me, this phrase is now transformed to the meaning of what I can contribute during this time. It gives me the path to change my mindset, to empower myself with the opportunity I have now to rebuild my economic platform. Another example, what does global uncertainty mean to my business? To me, asking myself how others are reacting to our changing world. It helps me in thinking that I now need to focus in productivity and how to empower employees who are scared or can no longer work with me. What funds are needed to stay afloat? How can I help others? How to manage your actions? How can you manage your employees when they can no longer be with you? Come with answers that will help you tool your thinking. These two, these two suggestions that I just gave you may or, make not, or may not make sense to you right now. And you may be expecting tips that yes, I will be giving to you later in this presentation. But this is the time also to breathe. Empower yourself with a ritual thinking that will change the path on how you go about things. Because of my line of work, and because I have had such an eclectic work journey, and like I mentioned before, have faced many other deep crises, I'm sharing what I have done in the past that has allowed me to successfully change each time I have faced a deep crisis or great challenges. Try it. It is free to try, and you may be surprised of the outcome of just doing this exercise. So Jasmine, let's, for the sake of it, let's do our first poll. Thank you, RMC, for this exercise. We're now going to open the poll. Please make sure when you see the poll that you also hit the submit button so your results are recorded. So Jasmine is asking if you will try this exercise. We have a few responses coming in. We will close the poll now just to make sure that we are in time. So the poll will now close. Thank you for your participation. So whoever answered yes, thank you very much. And uh, we, we, we do believe that trying new exercises and things that may be silly will help you also overcome impactful, meaningful activities that we'll be talking about them later. Proceed. So let's talk now about risk management. One way of being able to mitigate crisis, crisis during specially difficult circumstances is having a good risk management system. If you don't have one, we will still help you find solutions. I'm mentioning what a good risk management system is because even though in the next few slides, I will talk about how to overcome and sustain business during this pandemic coronavirus time, if you don't have a good risk management infrastructure, now is the time to invest in upgrading what you have or creating a new one for future times. What do I mean by this? Is that you need to sit down and review what your insurance policy covers or they do not cover at this time. What you are actually doing is you are now assessing all that you have, what you or your company could have done better, 
and all you don't have in place. Like I said before, time to change or upgrade your policies if needed. Most professionals believe that risk management for business is purchasing insurance. And most businesses buy only mandatory insurance such as liability or workers' comp. There are many other types of insurances that are worth pursuing that by law are not mandatory. For example, recently, one of my clients had a problem not related to coronavirus during this coronavirus crisis, but very serious. One of the restaurants of the particular client had a fire alarm situation where squirrels ate cables in the restaurant in question, creating a short circuit, where the fire department and police had to be deployed. Also, the squirrels ate some of the siding of his restaurant. Major expenses occurred that during this time of coronavirus crisis would have been avoided that he had other than the mandatory insurance he currently has. He now has to think in upgrading and getting a more robust liability insurance, but I recommend to only get new policies once the crisis is over. Otherwise, the, the premium may be marked up at a higher price than during normal times. But at least he knows, he knows now what he needs to do for the future and address immediate emergencies during this time, especially when he has so little business to the actual situation of the COVID-19 and the financial burden that could have been avoided had he had the proper insurance policies in place. This client has to now resolve his non-coronavirus emergency situation by finding funds from somewhere else to recover this crisis which by the way, he's doing because he's very responsible financially and his lender is willing to consider increasing his loan or perhaps modifying his loan so he can recover it after. But still, had my client had proper insurance policies in place, all of this would have been resolved. So this client needs to start a checklist for now and for the future. And one of the items on his checklist is a cri in crisis winds down to go back to insurance, insurance policy and try to revisit it during normal times. What he has at this time. A positive example is when I had a terrible incident during the Sandy hurricane crisis. I experienced a terrible flood in my home by someone who I had asked to fix the shelf. He drilled by mistake the fire sprinkler system that connected the entire building. The entire building got flooded. Tenants were affected, but my insurance policy covered all of mine and my tenant damages, replacing walls, floors, and even dry cleaning our carpets. Right? because I had the proper insurance policy. You need to assess what you have and what needs to be insured in normal situations and how it relates to a crisis. You also need to know what will not be covered in a time of catastrophe. And if there's a catastrophe, what insurance worth that you should purchase? Of course. You cannot go to the market and ask to purchase a coronavirus insurance policy. There is no insurance policy for coronavirus damages and will never be one. But you need to assess what type of problems should you encounter at any time of crisis, such as a chemical war or any other future ones, and what will you need to have covered? By making this type of needs assessment, it will help you overcome this crisis your especially difficult circumstances. Time to revisit your insurance portfolio and make sure to speak to three to four insurance companies about your business. Have them understand all parts of your infrastructure. Unfortunately, even in the best companies, 
Many insurance sales agents are not knowledgeable of all insurable instruments available in the market, but there are many who do an excellent job. Trust the ex experts and allow your business coaches or mentors or people who you trust to refer you to good professionals in the market. Again, you may be asking, why is she telling us all this information for the future if I need assistance right now? Because I'm also going to help you in figuring out how to address the present, but never forget the now of a crisis. Do something for now, but also for the future. Trust me, let's take a moment to reflect on what I just said. We're only going to do like three to four polls in the whole presentation, but let's do another poll right now. Thank you, Marcy, for telling us about the importance of insurance and what we have to review. Please participate in the poll. Make sure to hit the submit button at the end so your answers are recorded. So Jasmine is asking, will you be revisiting all your insurance policies and assess what you have covered or not? And we will now close the poll. Please make sure to hit submit before we close the poll and record your answers. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. But insurance is not the entire answer on how to recover and sustain your business. Part of a risk management system is assessing and understanding all that could possibly go wrong and how to overcome that. IT, a major play in this equation is having your proper information technology systems in place. During this coronavirus crisis, most of us are to be working from our homes or from our retail locations with minimum infrastructure. How do you empower yourself or your employees to be able to provide your services or fulfill your products? If you're working from home or our retail business with allowed limited hours to operate, do you have enough internet broadband, bandwidth? Are, you all, are all your apps and systems able to work? from any place other than your office or retail location. If you're working from home or work, do you purchase your phone or internet service from the same provider? For example, I have a different carrier for my fax service and a secondary e-fax service because in my industry, faxes are still very relevant and important. One goes through a phone line, while another one goes through internet protocols. I have different services for my phone and different ones for my internet. There are services that I purposely choose not to bundle. Sometimes savings are not the right answer. Because I depend on that if one system is compromised, hopefully the other ones will work. I also own a coffee business. My coffee business server my accounting server and bookkeeping server, my strategic management servers are run differently on different services, servers. If one goes down, hopefully the other two ones are still working. Consider having more than one internet provider or phone provider to run your operations. Are you able to back up your data on cloud servers? Good solution for a cost-effective matter is having the program Carbonite. But there are many others that most of your entrusted current technology vendors sell. Many types of back backups that you need. Are you able to work remotely from any place? What you do is you need to do or not to do. Make sure to embrace your technology communications and that your that your client and vendors understand you're on top of things. Understand that technology is rapidly changing and put effort in staying current. Because my company is also in India, we use Skype, Magic Jack, Google Apps, Microsoft Apps, and many other systems 
being able to communicate with our clients and vendors. And during crisis times, one or others may fail, but we can, because we now, because of this current crisis, you could negotiate with your providers. They may be offering with either free or reduced cost services to broaden your internet bandwidth or get the technology upgrade you may need during this time. Well, here, during this presentation, negotiation skills that you're going to have to have to overcome, negotiate, negotiate, and negotiate. This is time to embrace technology differently and only get resources you need after you created a checklist of results needed and what type of technology is needed to stay afloat. Also, think what may happen if there was no technology, and there was no electricity. What are you able to do if that happens? Do you rely 100% on technology? Are you 100% paperless? Or do you have crucial information available without technology? Those are things that you need to think about move to financial controls. Most individuals do not pay attention on the importance of having and running a good bookkeeping system. They rely only on CPAs for getting organized and filing taxes. But especially during crisis time, being able to understand your finances will allow you to take proper measures to be able to either get a line of credit or get some type of a loan some type of a financial assistance. You can only do so if you have proper financial records and a good bookkeeping system in place that you or your team can access at any time. Do what you need to do because you need to have good credit and many other tools to be able to have access to capital. But you need to have financial controls in place knowing how much liquidity do you have. And what I mean by liquidity is how much cash you can access right away without making you more vulnerable for it, which is something you can access by accessing your cash flow reports with proper organized accounting system softwares. If you have proper records, it will help you understand what measures need to be taken to overcome your current financial burden. When you have the ability to leverage all your resources by being so organized, it will help you to either get a loan, grant, or support from a government or a relief agency. It will help, certainly, your business stay afloat. Why am I saying this? Why, why will anybody support you? Because you are able to show to anyone who's willing to hear your troubles who has the ability to help you? How you manage your financials. At times of troubles, you're so organized and have a thumb on exactly how you were doing before a crisis that will show to the professionals or individuals that could help you that you are stable, that you're responsible. You're doing what is right, and for that reason, you're deserving of being helped because you value best practices. Some of you need to assess how much money you have, how much extra money you can have, for how long can you sustain your business, how you can afford everything you're doing. Can you afford to get helps from others? Will it be expensive? The, worst, the best way of doing so is by making sure that your financial software is giving you that information and not necessarily what the banks or other financial institutions say you have. You're the one that knows and should know what you have. But there's so many other aspects of proper risk management platform. I'm only mentioning just a few that I believe we all need to be focusing on at this time. But the one that should always be the most valuable one is people. Human capital and not in the sense of human resources. We're not alone. And us is the greatest, greatest assets, asset we have. At 
the end of the day, it boils down to people. Have you created a network of colleagues and friends that you can help or they can help you when you need them the most? It is not about what have you done lately for me. It is all about how you sustain and maintain relationships with utmost honesty, generosity, and commitment at times that are not critical. Others may have a different philosophy about how important or not human capital is. What we all should have in common is understanding what a good risk management system is and what it would look for you or your company. Large companies and some small ones have a risk management team in place that is already assessing all the aspects of what I'm mentioning here. Whether you have a team or not, make sure to create a checklist on all that I covered on this slide that will help you in getting all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and what to do to survive this crisis. Notice that I included a bullet that reads other. Why? Because you need to be able to find out what else is happening during this crisis that is affecting you doing differently from now and what I mentioned before, that when you recover and you will recover from this coronavirus pandemic, you may be able to incorporate to your risk management platform. For example, under human capital, did you have an employee manual or guiding principles in place that with a crisis like this works? What are your communication methods today? Is coronavirus today? my experience from the last 40 years of being in the workforce is that there will always be great times and also terrible times that could have been preventive if it was up to us humans and may not be preventive if nature takes its wrath. But one way or another, we are a resilient race and it, us, it is up to us to join forces to get the tools we need to survive this current threat. What to do? How to deal with uncertainty? Let's all agree that 9 11 changed the world. Security at airports. Everything changed. Trust changed. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has changed us all. We're in the middle of it, and we're not sure if we have reached the peak of it. Personally, I don't think we have. It is up to us now to remain resilient and find tools and techniques available in the market or figure out what we can create during these times of either re during these times to either remain in business or sustain economically our households. We are on uncharted territory. So being able to gather information, resources, innovating and creating or capitalizing on new systems will be the answer to surviving this crisis. I will be providing in the next slides techniques, tools, and resources you can implement right away. Whether you have a risk management system in place or not, you're now embracing this crisis to sustain or rebuild your business. Your business will survive if you take immediate actions some of them may feel like trivial. They are very important, as, as important as the major ones. I believe that if you follow simple steps that I'm giving you, together with the bigger steps, that you will be able to remain and survive this crisis. Personally, what to do? It's easy to just say, be at ease and remain calm. But in order to be able to act in an impactful way, you need to be able to put your emotions aside and focus that this crisis will end like many other ones, and focus your energy in getting solutions that will help you. Understand that we, as human beings, at a basic level, we are social animals and need each other 
to isolate yourself from each other. You're only a phone call away from your colleagues, family, and friends. Take care of yourself. Do what everybody else is saying. Sure, you're taking physical and sanitary precautions to stay healthy. This corona bug, this coronavirus bug, is very resilient, but so are we. You have to go out, make sure that every time you go out or go indoors, you wash your clothes, you disinfect everything, like everybody else is saying. That will also help you by staying healthy, staying in, in, in business is also taking these steps. Now in business, by having communication strategies, showing you care for all your employees or your colleagues will boost morale and help you navigate during this situation. You have all employee cell phone numbers information. I remember that in 9-11, we constantly had communications with all staff while I was working in New York City, sharing meeting places to know that everybody would be safe in case there would be further attacks. We think retrospectively, perhaps this idea was silly, but it helped us remain united. Proper communication plans on how to work remotely, measurements taken if you work together, answering questions of who, who will, what, what will, what will happen, where, when, how, how will help, that will help you stay focused and keep everybody informed. If you can no longer sustain your current employees, communicate with them and help them figure out what they could do during this crisis. Perhaps collect unemployment, keep your employees at a reduced pay, providing resources available that again, I will be mentioning in the next slide how to go about them, but everybody's mentioning in other webinars as well. So what else? Let's now talk about safety. Show you care that if it is mandatory to be at work, that you're disinfecting and cleaning in an extreme way your workplace. And if you and your colleagues work remotely, spend time talking with them and providing them encourage you. Retool, retool what you do. If you're a restaurant, can you do takeout deliveries? And if you're providing services, what can you do at this time that is virtual? Can you afford to reduce the pay of your employees? Can you accept payment for what you do at a discounted rate? What else could you do that will help you stay afloat? Financial freedom. Are you able to call your bank and ask them to increase your line of credit? That's a way of negotiating. Call your mortgage company, ask them to freeze your loan until the crisis is over. Call your landlord and ask to reduce the rent. Anyone who you cannot pay or need some help, call them. It may be that by law, certain things that may not be able to be done, but at this time we are all, again, social packs of people trying to help each other. What is, the gover what is the government doing? Are you able to access right away? Communicate that, negotiate. Call your suppliers and vendors if needed, your entire utility companies, your lenders, and negotiate new terms or relief support during this crisis. What you cannot afford doing, and this is very important, what you should not do is just cover your eyes and stop payment without communicating what is happening to you or to your business. Without asking for help and not doing anything, because by not communicating, your silence will not be understood. So let's talk about techniques and tools during this crisis time. One technique that has helped me is to be able to focus and eliminate noise. Sign up for only webinars or read only information that you trust the sources. 
either Microsoft 365, Slack, Google, the G Suite, WhatsApp, Jibble, Basecamp are good sources to work with Teams. Log me in, Zoom, WebEx, Skype, or some platforms to work together virtually. Negotiate, like I said before, on anything possibly you can think in terms of payments, modifications, but only do it as a result of the crisis and not as an opportunity. We all need to help each other at this time. I put a red bullet into innovation. You cannot look at the past and expect that the same pattern of recovery will occur as it happened during the 2008 crisis. We are all on uncharted territory. So you need to gather information from the past, stay current and rethink if your business can sustain change from innovation. For example, why am I saying this? One of my clients contacted me last week who needed me to give him information on how to get a government contract for his logistics company and get more business during this COVID-19 outbreak. His logistics company is in full capacity and he sees an opportunity for further growth. I asked him if he had registered with SAMS.gov, which is the government portal to get grants. His answer was no. So I told him that unless he had lots of luck, or a great content that this will not happen. Why? Because during a non-critical time, he had not done this activity, nor network with the government agencies, which could have had a major impact right now during this crisis. So he understood and will register for the future. But now, because of not being able to capitalize on what was not done in the past, now he needs to innovate, which means for his business, finding a solution that no one else may have thought and is out of the current radar for others. So what did I tell him? I told him to contact the local transportation union workers and offer subcontract his services or subcontract their services. This idea is one way to innovate a resource that may or may not have been thought before. Finally, I'd like to give you some tools you may be able to use now, but understand all information is rapidly changing. The next slide, I will be giving you some links that will help you assess weekly or even daily information to stay current. Proceed. So resources we can apply and that have been, I've noticed in other webinars that I've been participating to see what others are saying and trying to make this webinar different in giving you different information, we all need to acknowledge that information is rapidly changing. But you need to understand whatever you do about confidentiality issues, safety measurements, and compliance in whatever you're doing and you're accessing. So the next action may take you to the government side. Now, I live in New Jersey, so for me and for my clients that work in New Jersey, I would go to nj.gov, to the covid19.nj.gov. Um, for others that are joining this webinar, just make sure you Google your state and make sure that the extension is .gov, ny.gov, fl.gov whatever the extension of your government is, so you go to the right resource and you don't go to a company trying to tell you what the government is saying. The SBA is offering up to 2 million in economic injury disaster loans for small businesses impacted by the coronavirus. In addition to a resource page detailing eligibility and how to apply, so you have the link, you can look if you qualified or don't qualify. But be mindful that articles in newspapers and magazines may be endorsed by companies who are paying to appear in them. So always, like I said before, go to the source. 
If you need information about tax relief during this crisis, then go to irs.gov slash coronavirus. Visit trusted resources such like Forbes with non-sponsor updates articles on support. For example, Last week, Forbes magazine mentioned that the New York uh, Small Business Services is offering businesses with fewer than five employees grants to cover 40% of payroll costs for two months. Businesses with fewer than 100 employees and sales decreases of 25% or more will be eligible for zero interest loans up to 75,000. In the private sector, Private sector nonprofit companies, Amazon announced a 5 million neighborhood small business relief to provide cash grants to local Seattle small businesses. So if you're not in Seattle and Amazon is not doing in your local community, now it's the time to look at another resource. Facebook announced a $100 million grant for small business impacted by COVID-19 and launched the Business Resource Hub which features recommendations to help small businesses stay connected to customers and stay on track. I gave you the link. JP Morgan pledged 50 million in aid to small businesses and not-for-profits. Cabbage launched an online hub to help boost sales for US small businesses impacted by the COVID-19, including a system through which businesses can sell gift cards to consumers for use at a later date. Mark Cuban companies will reimburse employees for any lunch or coffee purchases from local independent small businesses. The Restaurants Workers Community Foundation form a COVID-19 emergency relief fund for small businesses and the restaurant workers and is accepting donations. Yelp. Jeremy, their CEO, Jeremy Stopman, announced the company is providing $25 million in coronavirus relief for independent restaurant and nightlife businesses in the form of weight advertising fees and free advertising products and services. So there's many links and resources that you need to gather, and I gave you the basic ones and some information about the basic ones. Proceed. So, what next? Best practice, make sure you use .gov extensions in wanting to go to government sites. For example, here's the one for health. And again, each state has a different one to the right association for best practices. For example, this one. What I did was, if you are, let's say that you are a company that provides boarding for pets, and people are asking if pets are getting coronavirus. Don't Google if pets are getting coronavirus. Go to the American Kennel Association to find that information and what the CDC and everybody else is saying about that. Go to the right association resource for whatever is what you need to know and act to be able to stay current. And don't accept shutdown. There's a lot of panic going on saying, well, we may have to shut down. Find ways to stay afloat. For example, one of the members of our senior management team at my bookkeeping company said to me that uh, one of our vendors, which is QuickBooks, we do a lot of business with QuickBooks, that they are doing donations through a platform to support. So I checked that platform and then I realized that what they're really doing is they're telling you that you should fundraise for yourself. So, and they gave you a platform called GoFundMe.com. So for the purpose of this webinar, a couple of days ago, I created a campaign because we felt, our senior management team, we felt that if we could help our clients by giving them money to pay for services that they could still be able to stay in business and use all the outsourced services that they use with all the other vendors. So I created this campaign. And when I created this campaign, I knew because of the past experience that I have had in fundraising for many 
previous years of my life that it will not have an impact. But I wanted to show to you that something that was done just a few days ago, to raise $100 for a $5,000 ask, this is not a good return of investment. And why did I get $100? Because I called two clients that are excellent clients, a personal friend, I posted in Facebook in four answers in a couple of days. But still, I'm doing something to stay current, to promote, to do, and, and that's something that you need to find the right resource to be able to stay afloat. Next. So finally, like we said before, don't panic. A key takeaway is to take your time before you think of furloughs or getting a loan. Stay focused, focus, and focus on all what you do. Educate yourself with the right resources. For example, yesterday there was a big pause of what the NJEDA, that's the New Jersey Economic Development Association. If you're calling from a different state, there's economic development associations that are doing all kinds of different activities and helping your local state. Go to your local association by eliminating noise, the too much information from other states that may not be applicable to you. Like we've said throughout the presentation, be sure to negotiate, to innovate, and always assess the proper return on investment on any new activity you take because you don't want to take your time, which now it's so valuable, to take a course of action that will not help you. Let's see. So again, we're giving you the slide of the resources that you can access. Um, some of you are already accessing all these resources because I cannot say over and over how important it is if you're going to try to go to an agency of the government that it has an extension.gov, if you're going to a not-for-profit that it has an extension.org, and make sure that don't, you don't buy into scams of companies that are trying to take advantage of this situation. Because there's a lot of good information and a lot of good people that are trying to help. Let's see. So I want to conclude um, by telling you that we have planned in having additional polls because of timing issues we didn't, but this is a time that if, we, if you need to ask any questions in addition to what we've provided you thus far, we'll open the platform to ask and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Marcy, for all of that wonderful um, information that people can use immediately and also use in the future. We're going to have our final poll. If you could please participate in the final poll, um, make sure to hit the submit button so we can record your answers. Um, we at CUED have a host of programs to help you continue to support your business. Please look at our website for those programs and apply to the program that is most applicable to your business. As I mentioned earlier, this webinar it has been recorded and we will post it later on this week in our YouTube channel. You can record um, what that link is, but if you cannot put it down, write it down at the moment, do not worry. If you RSVP'd to attend this webinar, we will send you an email with the link to the recording. If you did not RSVP to attend this webinar, please um, go to our website, email us at cued at business.ruckers.edu. Again, email us at cued at business.ruckers.edu and we will include you in the email that we send afterwards. I see that there are no questions. Um, we will wait one more minute. If anybody has questions, again, please put your questions in the chat room and we will answer any questions you have. If you think of any questions um, later on, again, please use the email address that I mentioned, cued at business.ruckers.edu.
edu and we will try to answer your questions. Thank you again for spending time with us today and we wish everyone health and safety.